All right, Joel, there might not be a bigger celebrity at the pass rusher position <laughs> than Von Miller. Uh, it's well earned. He's been dominant basically ever since he came to the league in 2011. Not a bad draft there with Cam Newton and Von Miller there. But what, what does he do that is different from some of the other pass rushers in the league? So Vaughn's another one of these smaller, quicker pass rushers. Um, he doesn't play the same position as Aaron Donald, but the question mark for him coming out was, is he going to be big enough to play pass rusher in the NFL? Being that he was 235, 240, 6'2", but obviously he proved very quickly that his quickness and his speed and his game transitions really well from college to the NFL. The thing that I think makes Vaughn unique is his quickness. He's got the quickness of a slot receiver. Mm. When you see him going and putting his outside foot in the ground and cutting to the inside or hitting offensive tackles with his spin move, he's just as quick as any player on that football field. And that's what makes it so tough for an offensive tackle, especially if you're one of these offensive tackles who's bigger and stronger and less fast and quick. Um, that's where he really excels, is if you're a guy that doesn't have great technique and you're not a great athlete. Now, I know in this clip he's going up against you. This is early in his career, 2012, but he's made his living a lot going on against the right tackle. And, and what can you go through the? I know this you're an offensive guy, but from a deep, defensive perspective, why do some teams decide to put their best pass rusher on that opposite side? When I first got in the NFL in 2007, all the best pass rushers were over the left tackle, and the thinking back then was, okay, quarterbacks are mostly right-handed. When you're a right-handed quarterback, your back is turned to the left side of the line for the most part. So we want our pass rushers to be on the blind side where if they beat the offensive tackle, they're going to be able to get in there and the quarterback won't be able to evade you because he won't be able to see you, right? We remember all those NFL network or uh, NFL films cut-ups from like the 90s where the you, they're, we're watching all those big hits for on the quarterback, right? Blowing guys up from the backside because the uh, offensive tackle is getting beat. The defensive end is coming in there and whacking a quarterback that's not looking at him, right? Well, because of that, what we saw is from high school to college to the NFL, all these offenses were putting their best athletes, their best offensive linemen at left tackle. So what you ended up having is your best pass rusher against their best pass blocker, and you had more stalemates. Right. And so teams started realizing, hey, instead of putting our best on their best and winning two or three times a game, why don't we put our best on their worst, which is usually the right tackle. That's usually been the position since everybody flooded to put their best player at left tackle. Then your second best player is going to right tackle. So let's put our best against their worst, and then we're going to win five to ten snaps a game. Granted, some of those the quarterback's going to get out, get out of the pocket or see that the right tackle got beat, but he's still going to have an effect on that play. And that's what defenses started to chart and started to value more often was how many times does this pass rusher affect the quarterback? It's not always a sack. A lot of times it's just a hit. Or a lot of times it's getting to him before he's gone through his progressions and making him start to scramble or making him move in the pocket where now it's an incomplete pass. Because that was more valuable, getting 10 of those in a game than just getting one sack from the uh, left tackle position. So early in Vaughn's career, they had him over the left tackle. He had a, tons of success, but they realized he was going to have even more success by moving him over the right tackle. And now what we see in the NFL is most of the good pass rushers are lining up over the right tackle because it's a better matchup. So consequently, what are the offenses doing? <laughs> now they're putting a lot of their better right tackle, better offensive linemen at right tackle. And it's always this uh, cat and mouse game between offensive line and defensive line. Yeah, before we get into the film, kind of more of a philosophical question. When they decide a guy coming out of college is like, this guy's a left tackle, this guy's a right tackle. You mentioned that teams have adjusted. What, have, what are they seeing now in these tackles that, that makes that decision that they maybe weren't seeing 10 years ago? That's a good question. I think um, the difficult thing right now is a lot of these offensive linemen from college haven't played in any pro-style schemes, and mm -hmm. most of their techniques are basically just get in the way for one second <laughs> while the ball gets chucked down the field by the quarterback because these spread RPO games, there's not a lot of detail for an offensive lineman. It's run left, run right, drop back pass, and for the most part, it's bubble screens, it's smoke screens, it's missile screens, it's all these quick passes where the offensive linemen aren't asked to do a whole lot. So you get to the NFL and now you're asked to kick back and block a drop back pass set against a guy like Von Miller and you got a lot to learn. 
So the transition has become more difficult for offensive linemen. Yeah, so going into this game with, with Von Miller, what do you what did you see on film and what, what, what did he maybe surprise you with or what were you preparing for? So going into this game, my game plan against Von Miller was, all right, he's an undersized player. He's really quick and fast. And I know if I give him my hands, if I try to do the typical offensive line coach where I just punch my hands in there, he's going to swat him down. He's a much better athlete than me. If he gets my hands knocked down, he's going to get a sack. I can't recover. So the strategy in this game, which is what you'll see here on this play, was I was just going to sit back, play basketball with my feet. I wasn't going to give him my hands until he shot his hands. And it, it turned out to be a pretty good strategy because I knew he wasn't strong enough to put his hands in my chest and run me over. So I was going to take a little bit of an angle in my set. You can see I'm not straight back in this play. I'm taking a little bit of an angle. I'm trying to keep my feet in front of him, or trying to just play basketball with my feet. Don't let my feet get beat. Let him put his hands on my chest. And when he does that, I'm just going to grab his shoulder pads and control him because I knew I was bigger than him and he wasn't going to be able to knock me over. So it worked really well in this game. And since then, I think a, a lot of people saw how I played Von Miller in this game and started playing him the same way. And then Von decided, okay, I need to be able to run people over. I need to at least threaten them with power. And so he got a lot stronger. And then what he started doing, instead of what we see from Miles a lot of time, is he picks that offensive tackle up. He puts that long arm in him. He drives him all the way back into the quarterback. Sometimes he tips him right over and puts him on their back and buries him in the ground. Von's still not strong enough to do that, but what he's going to do is he's going to shock you and punch you in the chest so hard that it knocks your balance off a little bit. And as an offensive lineman, when you get your balance on the back of your heels, you're instinctively going to try to rebalance yourself by bringing your weight forward and trying to fight that force. And so as soon as you start fighting that force against his hands in your chest and you start leaning back forward on him to try to stop that force going forward, what he does is then he transitions and he almost does like a judo or like an MMA move where he pushes you backwards and now he's going to pull you forward as soon as he feels you leaning forward. So his ability to react and to quickly transition from a push to a pull to be able to get around you or go to his second move has become his really go-to pass rush. Yeah, and he's another guy that can really almost defy physics like Miles Garrett does. Both yeah. guys went sex a and by the way, but that they can really kind of bend their way around you? What, what's, the, what's the counter move to, so to stop that's, that? So that's what makes Vaughn so deadly. You see a lot of guys winning in one-on-one -on -one pass rush, but they don't have the acceleration once they beat the offensive tackle to put their foot in the ground, get up to full speed, and then go whatever direction that they have mm. to go. You know, He's like the human joystick. When he puts his foot in the ground, he can go forward or he can go either side. And most guys, they're not explosive enough in their lower body to be able to make those sharp turns and sharp cuts. But Vaughn is getting a lot of these sacks because he beats his man and he's able to close to the quarterback quicker than almost anybody else in the NFL. Yeah, and he's been good basically since he started in the NFL, but really when he came into prominence was when that Denver defense just loaded up on guys. I mean, they had DeMarcus Ware on the other side of the field. They had a great secondary. They, they pretty much had everything, and it led to them winning a the Super Bowl. Yeah, defense is a synergistic game where the more good players you have together, the more everyone is better. And it's no more true on the defensive line because when you have a great pass rusher on one side and you have a great pass rusher on the other side or in the middle, offenses, you can usually account for one of those guys with protection schemes, but you really have to change what you want to do if you're going to try to account for both those guys on every play. And it really handicaps your playbook and it gives you about this many things that you can do successfully. And then defenses know it. When they have those two pass rushers, they know you're going to have to chip them. You're going to have to slide. You're going to have to keep extra tight ends in the game. And when they do that, their coverages, their blitz packages, they go way up. And they're allowed to really dictate to the offense. Yeah, it seems like this play, he, he gets around, but it's still a pretty quick throw to get it out of there. Is that a, is that a way to, to counter what, what he's been doing there? Yeah, I mean, obviously quick throws are always your best medicine against good pass rushers. But you see in this case right now, he's sticking his hands in there, and then he's able to kind of grab the back of Mitch's right bicep, and he's able to kind of slippery slide through there to be able to use Mitch's momentum and kind of pull him forward and down. And then while he's pulling Mitch down and forward, he's actually also propelling himself to the quarterback. So had the quarterback held on to the ball any longer, it would have been a sack. But when the ball comes out on time, no matter what the offense and defensive line does, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be 
either a completed pass or an incompletion like we saw here as, as a drop, and nobody will ever know that Mitch got beat on this play. This might be a silly question, but this game's in Denver. Mm -hmm. The teams go out there. They have to acclimate to the conditions. Mm -hmm. Vaughn is obviously very acclimated mm -hmm. with the conditions there. Does that play any part in, in what he's able to do with stamina if he's able to get to you in the fourth quarter? I think that playing out there a few times in my career, you notice the altitude a little bit. Um, but for me, the biggest issue playing at Mile High Stadium was always how dry it was. Mm. Like, I would always get bloody noses and your mouth just gets so dry, it almost is hard to breathe. To me, it's harder to breathe and catch your wind in First Energy Stadium in <laughs> September when it's humid than it is when you go out here to Mile High because you almost never have any humidity. Yeah, the air is a little bit more thin, but I never really noticed that to have much of an impact unless you just had it in your head that, the air was thinner and you weren't going to be able to breathe. But Vaughn is a phenomenal athlete. He's yeah. got tremendous shape and stamina. That's why you see a lot of the plays being made in the fourth quarter, but I don't necessarily think the altitude has that much to do with it. Yeah, and, and he's obviously one of the more out-there celebrities, a, a great talker whenever he's, oh, he's yeah. in front of the microphone. Is he like that on the field too? He talks a little bit. He has a lot of fun. He's a, he's a fun guy. I wouldn't say to play against because he's really good and he yeah. makes your day really long and hard. But... He is fun to play against because he's doing it the right way. He plays hard. He's a great competitor. He's a good sportsman. And I'm sure he's a great teammate. And he's a great dresser. He's always <laughs> got these great outfits for post game. And everybody I've ever known that's played with him really loves him. Yeah, and he's, he's getting now seventh or eighth season in the league. Is, is he showing any signs of slowing down? Or is he going to be like one of those guys like a, like a Julius Peppers? Who mm -hmm. You see him out there 10 years from now. I think that he's going to play a long time. Those small guys, they're going to lose a little bit of quickness, but he's smart enough that he's going to be able to overcome that. And what I'll see is, I'm guessing by the time he's in year 10, 11, 12, he may not be playing 50 to 60 snaps anymore, but he's going to be playing 20 to 30 key plays in that game because they know how deadly he is as a pass rusher, so they'll just keep him fresh. And they'll just make sure that he's in the game on those third and longs, those got-to-have-it plays where it's you know two-minute drives. Um, so they'll, they'll limit his snaps a little bit, I'm sure, but I don't see any reason why he can't play 15, 16 years. When he came into the league, was he different, or is, were there other players that are like him in the league then, and, and are think, there more like him Yeah, now? I think why he had such an impact early on in his career is because he was so different. He was so small and so quick. It was almost like trying to block a receiver with a tight end's body. He was just something that you hadn't seen. And a lot of times when there's that newness of a defensive player, that's the guy that nobody's seen before, you don't know how to attack him. You don't know how to handle it. And a lot of times it takes a few years to try to figure him out. And then by the time you figure him out, he's already advanced and changed his game, like I mentioned. Early on in his career, he didn't have a way to counter a guy that was just going to sit back on him and let him do all of his dancing and then grab him because he wasn't strong enough to go through you. Now he's strong enough to knock you back. So as an offensive tackle, there's really no kryptonite to go at consistently. So you got to just honestly play him every single snap. Anyone currently remind you of him? Boy, that's a good question. I would say Vic Beasley is one of those like young guys that kind of reminds me a little bit of him. Um, I think Vaughn is just, he has so many more pass rush moves in his repertoire. Vaughn's the type of guy that, he can do anything. He's got a great spin move. Like you mentioned, the way he can turn and dip and rip and bend around the corner is second to none. He's even got some really good, powerful hands where he can kind of knock you back, like we mentioned. A little bit of bull rush. Um, he can kind of do it all, and that's what makes him continue to be a special player in this league. Now, if you're, if you're an aspiring left tackle are you, and you're watching film of what you did to him, is it something that can be replicated even now today? Like what shutting him down the way you were able to? You could try it, and it all depends on the individual. As an offensive lineman, you got to know what you do best. You got to know who you are, and you got to be honest with yourself. You got to understand where your weaknesses are, and you got to know that that player you're going to go against is going to attack your weakness. So, what's your game plan going to be when he does that? And if you're a guy who's a great athlete and you can try to play basketball with Von Miller out there and make him try to run you over, that's probably the strategy that I would take but because I knew what I could do as an offensive lineman and I knew he wasn't going to run me over, right? If you're a guy that's going to get run over and you're worried about that, maybe you got to take a little different strategy. you got to be a little bit more aggressive with your hands, trying to use your hands, trying to punch him, stop his momentum, make him restart. 
but then that opens you up to all the great hand moves that he has. So it's, it's really a, a chess match here between the two of you throughout the game. Yeah, who, who are the guys that maybe he feasts on the most, though? The guys that he beats up the most are the big, slow, strong guys because he's so quick. His get-off, I mean, he's not afraid to have two or three offsides a game because he's getting off that ball, and he's going to get past you. And as an offensive lineman, he's going to get you off balance right out, out the gate. And so as a big, strong, physical right tackle, you're going to struggle because you're going to have a hard time keeping up with his speed. And then that's going to open you up to all sorts of inside counter moves, the spin moves, the stuff that we saw in the Super Bowl a few years ago yeah. when he was just unblockable. Yeah, and so you mentioned the offsides thing. I, does that affect him at all? If he gets called for a few of those, does he, he change his game up at all? I guarantee in their meeting they don't say a single word to him when he <laughs> jumps offsides because they know that it's a risk that's worth taking. You know, two offsides in a game because he's jumping the count might mean 10 or 15 impact plays in that game against that offensive tackle. Might be hits on the quarterback might be sacks, that's going to have a much greater impact on the outcome of the game versus giving them five yards on first and ten or third and ten. Yeah. Now, if it's, if it's third and five and all they need is a first down to win and you jump off sides, they might be having a conversation with him. But he is a smart player. He knows time and place. He knows when he needs to jump that snap count. He's also watching the quarterback. He's looking for any tells from that quarterback, whether it be his hands, whether it be his eyes, whether it be his butt, whether he sinks down before the snap's going to come. Those are all things that these guys watch. I mean, as a pass rusher in the NFL, you don't have a big playbook. Really, your playbook's pretty small. You're going to either run after the quarterback or you're going to stun inside or you're going to go left or right. That's about it. So once you kind of figure out that type of stuff, then all the studying you're doing during the week is the quarterback, and the guy you're, you're pass rushing against. And you're trying to get every single tell and learn every single weakness that they have so that when you're going into the game, you're just reacting.